After all that, Darwin's publisher, John Murray, didn't think the subject very interesting, and one of his advisers said, Tell Darwin to concentrate on writing a book about pigeons. Everybody's interested in pigeons. Then Darwin decided on a title, an abstract of an essay on the origin of species and varieties through natural selection. He wouldn't really have made it as a publisher, would he, Darwin? Ah, Miss Bronte, I've got it. Uh, A treatise upon the ability of heights to attain their quantum wutheringness. Eventually called On the Origin of Species, Darwin's book was published in 1859, and he said that revealing his secret was like confessing a murder. The publishers sold all 1,250 copies in the first day. As Darwin feared, some people did go mad. For example, his friend Huxley was defending natural selection at a lecture in Oxford in 1860, when Bishop Wilberforce stood up and shouted, Tell me, sire, is it on your grandmother's or grandfather's side that you're descended from a monkey? One objection was that for natural selection to work would take hundreds of generations to form a new species, and the Earth simply hadn't been around long enough for the evolution of all the world's plants and animals. This was where Darwin shocked the scientific world again with his conclusions of the Earth's age. So when Darwin came up with his figure, it must have been like the Antiques Roadshow. Do you have any idea how old this item is? I haven't any idea, because my mother-in-law gave it to me. Would you be surprised if I told you it was 300 million years old? (laughs) 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 But there was one passage in On the Origin of Species that more than any other had the creationists howling with laughter. Whales, Darwin realised, were mammals and so must be related to other mammals. So he wrote, In North America, the black bear has been seen swimming for hours catching insects like a whale. I can see no difficulty in a race of bears being rendered by natural selection more aquatic in their structure and habits till a creature was produced as monstrous as a whale. Darwin must have felt like when you say something really stupid at school and all the other kids were going, yeah, that kid said that a bear could become a whale, you div. Ha ha! Where were the fossils of creatures that were halfway between one species and the next, he was asked. Where was the evidence of this whale-bear thing? Right up to the 1980s, creationists like Alan Haywood in his book Creation and Evolution were saying... Darwinists rarely mention the whale as it presents them with one of their most insoluble problems. Until the 1990s, when paleontologists discovered a series of fossils in Pakistan of whales with bear-like features, including Ambulocetus natans, which is Latin for the swimming, walking whale. So it took the evolutionists 130 years, but they got there. It would have been brilliant to ring up the bloke who discovered it and say, guess what, I've discovered a lost page in Darwin that says, I am convinced there is a creature that is half llama and half daddy long legs. All credit to the creationists for keeping going, though. The Jehovah's Witness magazine, Awake, said... Many of the conclusions by evolutionists are speculative, based mainly as they are on a few old teeth, bones and stones. And perhaps they have a case that on certain points, Darwin wasn't always entirely accurate. Although, strangely, they don't seem to apply the same levels of scrutiny to the theory that goes, woman, she was invented out of a man's rib. And your sexual organs, you wouldn't even notice they were there, except that Eve was persuaded to eat an apple. By a talking snake. There was one major omission from On the Origin of Species, which is how humans fitted into this theory of evolution. This, he'd said, would have been too much for people to take in one go. But he sought to redress that in this book, The Descent of Man, written in 1871. In The Descent of Man, he set out to prove the similarities between humans and apes. He cited the case of a man called Brian, who'd given baboons bowls of strong beer and observed them drunk. He said, On the following morning, they were cross and dismal. They held their aching heads with both hands and wore a most pitiable expression. I'll have a large banana with extra chilli. In The Descent of Man, Darwin showed how closely embryos of animals resemble human embryos and how the hair on human arms converges towards the elbow, just as it does on gorillas and on chimpanzees. So at one point he wrote, We do not know whether man is descended from the chimpanzee or gorilla. 
Which, in 1871, must have been like a teenage girl saying to her dad, I don't know whether to go out with a Hell's Angel or Gary Glitter. But for the rest of his life, Darwin agonised about the consequences of his science. He refused to publicly support atheists that were tried for blasphemy. And instead of defending himself and his supporters when they were attacked, he buried himself in more research. He carried out an exhaustive study of worms. He counted the number of worms in his garden, deciding there were 53,767 per acre. And when he ran out of space to study them, he filled his billiard room with worms. Nasty kick off the worm there. He flashed lights at them, blew whistles at them, blew tobacco smoke at them, and got his son to play a bassoon at them. Towards the end of his life, a layer of scientists emerged who sought to misuse Darwin to try and prove that survival of the fittest meant some humans were born inferior. This group included Cesare Lombroso, who argued that people who inherited the urge to be criminals also inherited the urge to get tattoos. Then there was Francis Galton, another of Darwin's cousins and a prominent scientist, who claimed to have used natural selection to prove something else. I have compiled a beauty data by classifying the girls I passed in streets as attractive, indifferent or repellent. I found London to rank highest for beauty, Aberdeen lowest. Galton followed the theories of Etienne Serre, a famous French biologist who argued that black people's navels were higher on their stomachs than those of whites, which proved they were more childlike and less intelligent. And Gustave Le Bon, admired as the founder of social psychology, wrote in 1879... In the most intelligent races, as among the Parisians, women's brains are closer in size to those of gorillas than male human brains. An intelligent woman is possible, but is as unlikely as a gorilla with two heads. Darwin opposed all those who used the term survival of the fittest as justification for the inequalities in human society. Rather than suggest that people at the bottom of society only have themselves to blame, he said, If the misery of our poor be caused not by the laws of nature, but by our institutions, great is our sin. In fact, he argued that one of the ways humans had survived was by developing a sense of sympathy for the deprived. And he even added that, as mankind developed, far from the strongest surviving... The bravest men willing to go to the front of the battle would perish in larger numbers than other men. Now the church has finally learned to adapt to Darwin's theories, so most bishops conclude that the Bible isn't necessarily to be taken literally. Which isn't a bad cop-out. Imagine in a law court if someone's evidence was finally found to be complete rubbish. So they said, well, thing is, Your Honour, when I said I was at the cinema on the night of the murder, I obviously didn't mean that literally. Uh, it was just a sort of metaphor. Darwin's genius was to look at the same world as every other human in history and see something completely different, to the extent that 160 years later, the missing links to his theories are still being found. So perhaps it's time that Darwin was given his rightful place. And if kids do have to sing hymns about God creating everything, at least they should be honest hymns and mean everything, including the parasitic wasp. If you're in the mood to evolve a bit, give your mind a stretch at the Mark Steele Lectures website at www.open2.net. Why not join the forums? They're my natural selection. <laughs>